Welcome to season three of Sadie Melody. I'm going to play and watch Star Trek now. So we've finally moved Melody out of the yard that she's been sat in and rotting for the last 18 years and she's settled into her new home uh, ready for us to do work over the winter. Yep, there's lots going on in this episode, including sorting out our battery system, at least to make it good over winter, although we do need to upgrade it, and installing some deck glands from Scanstrut. Mm -hmm. We've worked very, very hard to stop water coming into this boat, as you know, and uh, part of that is cable glands and how cable glands go through the deck of the boat. Really, really important. Now, the kind of type that you might have seen before are these jobbies. They're little uh, stainless steel. They're, they're nice. They're, they're 316 uh, cable glands. They're a little bit restricted in terms of how thick material you can put it through, uh, but you basically, you put a wire, you put your cable through there, through that rubber grommet, and when you tighten this down, it squashes the wire and stops, stops water getting in, okay? They're all right, but we are going with a company called Scanstrut. Now, Scanstrut are very well known, very well respected in the, in the industry. We've done our research, we've done our homework, and they're who we're going with because, without putting too fine a point on it, they're the best maker of cable glands, and we feel that this is a really important thing for us to do. So, I'll give you a quick rundown of what we're using. We're using those ones for where we need to put lots of wires through together. One of them for our solar panel. These uh, torpedo shaped ones are going to be for our port and starboard lights and our stern light. And then these smaller ones are for other wires that need to go through like the GPS antenna for the auto helm and the one for the chart plotter and all of those kind of stuff. So I've got to be working in two places. I've got to be outside drilling holes and fitting all of these fancy schmancy deck fittings, which I can't really do now because it's tipping it down with rain in kind of showers. So I'm hoping to get that done tomorrow. Uh, either way, that will be coming up. Uh, so I'm going to start with a kind of overhaul and rewire of our battery bank, our sort of normal battery bank. Let's go and have a look downstairs, uh, clear out that whole area and have a look at what we've got. I'm going to clear up this whole part of the boat, all of these cushions, start lifting up locker lids. I'll probably give it a good, a good spritz and a clean and uh, have a really good look at the battery bay and see how I'm going to wire it all up. Most of you know that Melissa and I are getting married this week and to our amazement we've had loads of messages asking if we have a wedding gift list. Well because we're moving on to Melody soon we're actually getting rid of all of our belongings and our gift list is simply to put towards our lithium batteries, solar panels and charging system. We're definitely not asking anybody to do this but because so many people asked about the link we're putting it here so that if you did want to contribute towards that as a wedding prezi that would be awesome. We're a bit nervous about posting it because we don't want to become a, uh, come across as one of those channels who are seen to be begging for money. We use the money we earn from YouTube to put towards Melody's upgrades, so please don't think that about us. We're only putting it here because so many people have asked about the link. What we've got here is a Sonashine 230, a Lucas 104, another Lucas 104, another Lucas 125, a Mercedes-Benz 92 amp and a Varta uh, 100 amp. So I know you shouldn't be mixing lead acid and uh, AGM or gels anyway, but I'm going to because it's only got to last us the winter and these are free, cheap, secondhand. So I'm just gonna drop test them, which I also know you shouldn't do with gels, but I wanna discard anything that's really poor. Um, so let's just have a quick look at this Sonashine 230. That's giving us a beautiful charge and it's showing us weak but not awful. Hmm, I'm not sure about that one. And I'm not very comfortable with the fact that this cell's bulged out. I probably won't use that. This first Lucas battery, let's just tighten that up. And let's just go one. This is a Lucas 104 amp hour, showing as fantastic and strong. This Lucas battery, showing as fantastic and strong. This Lucas battery, showing as fantastic 
and strong. This uh, Mercedes battery showing as fantastic and strong. This Varta battery, now I thought this one was okay, but it's showing us mm, a bit weak. I, I'm, I'm gonna charge that one and perhaps add it to the mix later. But I think for now, we're gonna stick with these four and that'll give us one, two, three, 408, 428, 433, yeah, about 430 amp hours, um, which is more than enough for us to be getting on with um, and running our LED lights over winter. But we are in desperate need of an upgrade. This is the back of our control panel. I've got my batteries all in there. That that one there, the Varta one, is a bit suspect and might not make the cut. But I'll charge it up in a bit. Now, in here, on our in the pilot house, on our control console, we have a very old Stowe um, paddle wheel. Uh, it's a um, speed through the water. So I'm gonna. That's redundant now, and I'm gonna replace it with. A NASA BM1 battery monitor. Now that will eventually get replaced again by a newer, more modern system. Um, so that's why I've taken the back off there so that I can uh, undo these little thumb screws and get rid of you. So Jack and I have just got back to the boat after being out at the gym and stuff um, and Andy has absolutely trashed the place. He's struggling. Yeah. I'm wiring up a shunt resistor so that we can monitor the usage of this of the, these batteries is is just a fancy ammeter really um, but it does some some hocus pocus to tell you how long you've got left in your battery so you can program it for the number of cells that you've got the amps that you've got and what have you and uh but in order to do that i've got a wire and a shunt resistor but the difficulty i had was again the the problem that we've had with this boat from the start which is that everything is glued uh, every single piece of wood has been glued and they've run electrical cables and plumbing and pipe work and all kinds of brilliant stuff and then glued wood over the top of it all which is fine but it means that every time you try and remove something you, you end up having to break a piece of timber to get it off which is so annoying it says 12.8 volts and it says there's a draw of one amp discharge on it so something that be the fridge no it can't be there's nothing connected to it oh. it just means that it's not calibrated right at the moment don't worry that's fine right so um progress the place is still a tip let me just show you very quickly here's the battery monitor oh i don't know if you can read that but what we've got i've calibrated it for 430 amps which is what we've got so we've got 95 percent charge we've got 65 hours of battery left remaining and then this will show us our voltage and amps. So we've got 5.9 amps drawing at the moment with the fridge and all the lights on. Uh, and then, um, oh yeah, that's just the backlight. Uh, and then you've got various, there you go. So that's, that takes you back to the percentage and number of hours left. So that, that's all calibrated and all working. Right, Jack? Yeah. That's all calibrated and all working and um, tomorrow it looks like a dry day so I can get the deck uh, glands fitted, those scan scut, scan scut, scan scan strut glands, God, scan strut glands, it's been a long day. has been a long day, so we'll get those fitted tomorrow, um, should be quite interesting. So now Andy sorted out the um, dodgy old battery bank which obviously is going to need upgrading in the future, um, let's go and have um, take the deck glands. That was the hat shutting. Yeah. <laughs> that made a jump. It did. Um, take the deck glands. Take the deck glands. <laughs> yeah. Go and have a look what we're going to do with them. Okay, so number one is the anchor windlass sitting here, which I've, I haven't yet made the, the, the plinth, the proper mounts for the anchor windlass. But there are three cables 
they're all, I'm going to replace all these. I'm going to open it up and replace them, but they come out the side of the windlass here, or they will do on my boat, and go down the side here and through this deck gland. Normally, I get, I know what you're going to say, they should go vertically straight down into the anchor locker. I'm not going to do that because this box is a hollow box welded on the deck. If I drill into that box, it'll get seawater in and rot from the inside. So I'm going to come out the side of the anchor windlass here and go off the edge of the box and through this deck gland, nice and neatly placed on the deck next to it. Okay, so here at the mast foot, we have a whole load more deck glands. We've got a, a gooseneck, which I'm going to use for some of the cabling, and I've got four of these Scanstruct glands for the masthead tricolour light, which is also our anchor light, uh, the VHF antenna, the, we'll probably put a TV and 5G antenna on the top of the mast, uh, the wind speed anemometer, and then at the spreaders, we've got the spreader light, the steaming light, uh, the radar, and the uh, search light. On here, We've got our starboard light, which will be wired into one of these cool little torpedo shaped glands kind of there, I imagine, either there or on the side here, which will be really cool. And the same on the starboard side, we've got our port light, which mounts on this. Um, same on the port side? That is the port side. You said same on the starboard side, we've got our port oh. light. Duh. <laughs> same on the port side, we've got our port light which mounts yay like that. We've got one of these cool little cable glands, which will either go there or on the side, not quite sure which yet. I don't suppose it makes much difference to be dead honest. And then we'll, we'll also have our solar panel on the uh, roof of the pilot house, which as I say, is ultimately gonna be the one that supplies our starter batteries. But over winter, for the time being, we'll just have the one panel supplying our AGMs over winter. But that gland there will go something like that. Alongside that solar panel, we've got this beastie, which is a second-hand Rutland 913. It's had the bearings replaced and it's in good order. A lot of people are going to tell me, you don't need a wind charger, you need good batteries and good solar. And I completely agree. If you're sailing in an area where you've got more wind and less, sorry, more sun and less wind, over our winter, we are definitely wind rich and sun poor. So this is going on a big steel pole at the back to keep our batteries topped up. Plus it works all night, every night here. It won't, it will never stop. Sorry neighbours. Yes, and that needs one of these slightly larger seals because the cable carrying a few more amps is a little bit more, needs to be a bit more beefy, doesn't it? And then we've got this lot, a whole load of GPS antennas. This one is for our, sorry, that one is for our um, autopilot. This one is for our Raymarine chart plotter. That one is for our secondary chart plotter. Uh, and that one, I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna use it for yet, but I'll probably replace that one with a secondary VHF. At the minute, I've got a temporary fitting for them because as you know, all of this slot has got to go on the solar arch that Nigel is making for us which is more than a solar arch, it's solar and power and VHF and davits and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just mounting it temporarily so that we can get the deck glands working, we can get the wiring working and we can wire it all up knowing that it works ready for when Nigel comes with the arch. So that lot, along with our stern light, which will go on the back here. Little dinky stern light, they're amazing, these LED stuff now. That will all go through another one of these multi cables and a, probably a couple of these smaller ones for the amount of cables that are going through there. So the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna start by just literally mounting the fittings directly to the deck, drilling and tapping the holes, um, because we've got to have those holes drilled and tapped and then remove them and paint inside all of those holes so that they don't rust um, from having bare steel exposed. These actually come with stainless steel screws uh, self-tapping screws um, and I'm not going to use them because I'm screwing into steel I'm going to drill and tap I think and use some set screws instead I have actually got a t-bar for these taps so I shouldn't be using my drill uh, but I am doing so bite me Hello. It's hard to get my head down in this position. What I'm going to do, you can see how this works. 
that base is now screwed down and it's got a neoprene gasket so it's not going to leak. And the top goes on and inside there is a hefty piece of rubber which you drill out to the cables that you want. Now I'm not going to do that right this minute because I'm going to change the cables on the windlass as I said. Plus I've also heard a really cool trick which is to make these make the rubber easier to drill through uh, put it in the freezer overnight it makes it go rock hard and then you can drill through it now I'm going to check that I'm going to fact check that with Scanstruck before I do it with their tech team uh, but it sounds plausible to me however that is now ready for when I come to wire up my windlass and mount the windlass I'm just uh, sorting out the wiring for the port and starboard lights which are going on to the pilot house and um, they come with a really short pigtail on just a, a little a little length of wire so what I've done is I've taken the circuit board out and directly soldered um, the cables to the circuit board so that when this passes through the back you get a better seal with the cable the, the seal around the back of the, the, the actual light case uh, my preferred soldering iron is the TS100. I've been through this before. It's a fantastic little soldering iron. Um, you can get it on Amazon or anywhere, but it works off anything from, I think, 5 to 48 volts. So I'm just running it off a, a 3S lithium polymer battery. And then the other thing that I'm considering doing, um, I, haven't, I might not do it today, but one of the things that I like is the ability to run everything on the boat independently because as we all know, if you get caught in an electrical storm, there's a chance that you could have your wiring knocked out. So what I'm considering doing is using these XT30 connectors, which are tiny little things like that and like this and soldering XT30s onto everything. Uh, uh, so every light, every radio, either XT30s or XT60s, depending on the current draw. And it then means that I can, I can literally um, turn the whole boat off if there's an electrical storm, isolators off, batteries off, everything off, and I can just run individual batteries like this, lithium batteries or any battery with the right voltage to port light, starboard light, stern light, VHF. And everything's got its individual little battery, you know, even if you just gaffer tape it to the back, uh, but it means you can switch everything off but still have nav lights and comms. Uh, I might do that, but probably not today. I'm using these cute little um, little glands to go through the side. They're like torpedo shaped glands and they'll go through uh, either side on the side walls of the pilot house. We haven't finished painting the boat, as you know, but the advantage of doing this now is that all the holes are drilled. I'm going over myself, I keep repeating this, but we're, we're mounting everything so that we can then demount it and paint and anywhere that there needs to be paint inside a screw hole. It doesn't matter so much here because this is a bit of stainless, but um, other places where it needs paint in the screw holes to stop things from going, you know, rusty, we need to get everything mounted. Uh. That's a nice neat little fitting. Port light, deck gland, and the cable goes through, which I can connect up and try it and yeah, try them later. The next thing I want to try and tackle is fitting this solar panel uh, to the front of the pilot house here. Um, it's one of the flexible ones from SunPower. It's 100 and, I think it's 110, which is uh, perfect for keeping us topped up. Eventually, this solar panel will just be there to top up our um, starter batteries. Uh, but because we're not using the engine over winter and we're, we, I'm, I've got those old AGMs, we're going to be using it to just keep the AGMs, the, gel, the normal house batteries up and running. I'll probably weld some studs on like, like so 
and then just use a washer and a nut. I'll probably put a dome nut on to hold it down. But I also want to try and make sure that there's enough airflow under the panel. So I'm going to use a piece of this underneath it, this uh, UPVC um, polycarbonate roofing material. And that way it just, it just stops any, or it, it sort of reduces the chance of it, of the panel getting hot spots and overheating. So yeah, they will be long enough to go through the, you pick the polycarbonate through the solar panel and put a nut and a washer on the top. Perfect. There's our piece of polycarbonate cut to size. Now these panels will, are happy with a flex of up to about 30 degrees. So that's going to be fine. And there you go, we've got a solar panel held down with stainless steel um, bar and washers and sitting on a nice piece of polycarbonate to get some airflow underneath so it doesn't overheat. The next thing, of course, is to wire it up. So we've got to put the next deck gland on to take the cables through the roof of the pilot house and down to the MPPT, MPPT controller so that we can get some charge going into our batteries from this bad boy. So here's our big roll of solar panel cable. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in our solar panels and all of our electronics come from Pro Marine Store, who we work with, um, and we're buying all of our stuff from them. Ben there is uber helpful, can't help you enough. Uh, and they do all kinds of channelry and boat bits, but they, they're really, really good on stuff like renewable energy and, and solar panels, and uh, they do electric outboards and, and all that kind of stuff. So I thoroughly recommend going to them. Uh, we get a lot of excellent advice as well as bits and pieces. So we've got our solar panel from them uh, so, and our solar cable and the MPPT controller. Uh, and as I mentioned, our wedding gift list is on their website. If you did want to see that, um, not asking, <laughs> just telling. Uh, so there you go. So this is the next deck gland, again from Scanstrut, because that's we're exclusively using their stuff for this kind of... There's a beautiful deck gland for the solar panel. And I've just got to find which of these grommets, they come with all these different size um, rubber grommets to slide over the cable to seal it in. So they're the right size. I need two of them. Um, it's uh, four, no, um, four millimeter square, this uh, four square mil, this uh, cable. And it's single strand, but uh, single core, uh, multi-strand, like ridiculously strong. That's the right size. What do you reckon? I reckon something like that. Oh no, that's one of my nice drill bits. <sighs> There's our deck gland. What I've got to do now is solder on the connectors to connect onto this to put, take the cable through the deck gland. You can see how it works. This lifts off. The cables go through here, through the deck. Uh, you've got two rubber grommets that go in here. That goes on, a screw holds it down. So the next thing is to, uh, to make the cables up. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. That goes through there. You solder this onto here and then it goes through this way you think it's going to go through the other way but it doesn't it goes through that way you know, it solders really nicely i've got a slightly bigger tip than the standard one that comes with the um with the ts100 here we are just before i solder that on i'm just going to double check that that is correct yeah oh Yeah, yeah, okay. If anyone's worrying about my uh, chart table, by the way, I'm gonna be refacing the chart table. In fact, I'm probably gonna be rebuilding the whole chart table, so don't panic. I know I'm treating it very poorly. And that, if you're wondering, I don't often do this because we are not a how-to channel. We're a what happened channel. But that, if you're wondering, 
is what a soldered joint on a solar panel cable should look like. Proper, properly silver and not dull and fully soaked in solder. Full proper capillary action stuff. Just before we wire up, I want to just um, check the voltage uh, on this. Hopefully you can see this. Uh, positive and negative. We've got 21.4 volts uh, coming out the panel, which is lovely. Very happy with that. Let's get this off, run the cables through, and then we can start thinking about connecting up M put put I've drilled and tapped these. For better or worse, it's a stainless um, uh, screw into mild steel, so I, I might be making trouble for myself there. Uh, but it's a case of, well, do you drill and tap it, or do you put a nut on the back, or what? Don't know. I don't know what the solution is, the, the, the kind of best, what to do for the best, but we'll find out, I suppose. We'll be living aboard, so any problems like that we can monitor and address as they occur. Um, which is why I, I would say a steel boat isn't really the right thing for non-liverboards. And that might be a controversial thing to say. But I think a steel boat is great if you're on it all the time. Because it's a strong, capable, seagoing thing. And you can fix problems as they come up. But I, I would suggest it's probably not the right thing if you're not living aboard. Because you just gonna have a world of pain every time you come back to the boat but with something like this if this does turn out to be folly and I should have fitted these a different way it'll be okay because we'll be living aboard and I'll notice it I've got to say though I'm well impressed with these fittings they just they fit so nicely everything works perfectly the only thing I've changed is that I'm not using the self-tapping screws supplied with them. Right, done. Next thing is, go inside, check that I've still got yummy voltage coming out of this. Oh, I'm gonna have to sort out the length of that cable because that's gonna mess with my head. I had to take that apart and do it again because those cables weren't sitting. One was, that, this one was longer and was going over the top of the other and I didn't like it. So, here we go, nice. After much grunting and swearing, I've got these cables through to the saloon. Uh, I should really have filmed that bit, but I didn't. It wasn't that entertaining. Let's just uh, see what we've got. Make sure that it's all still working. We've got 21.2 volts coming in from the panel. There you go, 21.2 volts. So if you don't know what ferrules are, in a lot of electronics on boats and cars and that kind of thing, you end up with these um, terminal blocks where you just wire in and it, it crimps the cable down. You just tighten up a little screw and it crimps the cable, which is, you know, they're fine. And most people just shove the wire in and tighten it down, but my experience is it tends to tends to flatten the cable and um, I prefer to put a ferrule that crimped onto the cable first. So you have a set of ferrules like yay, like so. Um, and you find the one that fits the terminal block and the cable, crimp it onto the end of the cable. And then when you tighten this down, it doesn't crush the uh, the cable itself. So yeah, the grey size ferrules actually fit perfectly. So what you do look, so you put that all the way down over there, crimp this bit, and you have a, a crimping tool which has kind of got four things in there like that. And you crimp down on the ferrule. That's now gripped on really beautifully and it's square. So being square, it fits into our controller 
absolutely perfectly and then I've connected it up and as you can see it's flashing blue flashing blue oh, solid blue and it's obviously in some sort of initialization mode right so I've connected up the battery bank and I've put the positive to the first battery in the chain and the negative to the final battery in the chain I'm not sure if that's the right thing to do but uh, but I think it is it's the way I would normally charge uh, connected it all up that's great the it says in the instructions to put the battery on first it says to put the load on first actually but we've got no load running directly from the panel all we're using it for is charging at the moment so that's fine um, and then you connect up the panel so it's load first then battery then panel and the reason you do it in that order is because when you connect your batteries up it did it auto detects your battery bank and what have you I'm going to obviously mount all of this stuff nicely so don't worry about the fact that it looks a bit higgledy piggledy as I said earlier I want to get it all connected up uh, and working and then I can kind of trim it all and make it all look sweet so having done that let's connect this up and then the next stage I think is the uh, figure out the um, the Bluetoothy side of it so in the manual here there's a QR code which are these things if you've not seen them before uh, so I'm gonna um, use my phone to scan the QR code come on downloads Victron connect let's have you that's amazing it's, uh, it's downloaded the app uh, it's connected to automatically you just put in the the default pin code which is just all zeros uh, it's just doing an update uh, update and once it's done the update we should be able to see on my phone what it's doing if you don't have a smartphone and you don't want to use all the fancy Bluetooth stuff, can't understand why you wouldn't want to, but if you didn't want to, you, there are actually conventional jumpers on the circuit board on this. So you can take out a, off a jumper and move it from pin one to two to three and three to four. And that changes the settings, um, which is sort of old schooly way of doing stuff. It's the way we used to do it, but uh, this is really quite clever. I've opened the app see if you can see that I'm not sure but you can read that it's uh, 30 watts and what does that say it's that we've got a drawer of what 1.7 amps on there at the moment we we've got a bit of drawer on there because we've got the little little fridge running to keep our milk cool for our cups of tea but on a fairly dull day in Wales we're, we're getting 31 watts uh, out of that 100 watt panel which obviously if we we're in the med or somewhere it'll be generating a lot more than that so yeah, really, really pleased. Thanks Ben for the advice uh, on the solar panel and bits and pieces and for supplying that for us. Well, it's the next morning. If you're wondering why Melissa isn't here, by the way, she's actually at home preparing for the wedding. So I'm here by myself doing a few little bits and pieces. Uh, and we're, we're pretty much getting there with all of these deck glands, um, which I'm desperately trying to get fitted so that we can paint the whole of the boat. So we can then fit where they'll be fitted and drilled and we can remove them paint the boat and then put them back what I've got to do now I want to try and wire up I've got I put a VHF up here which I want to wire up to the antenna at the back we're going to have two VHFs VHFs VHF radios on this boat I'm going to have one on the uh, in here which has got an antenna on the top of the mast and then we're going to have a separate one I'll probably end up with that in the cockpit to be dead honest but with an antenna at the back so that if a seagull breaks my antenna on top of the mast that's fine all the wiring goes underneath the side decks behind me so I've got to empty all of this get all of those boxes of tools out so I can scroll around in there and remove some of the old wiring from there and start running the antenna cable and all of the stuff for the GPS pucks and the uh, wind charger the uh, turbine uh, all has to go through the conduit at the back under there under the tow rail so what I have here is a, a big load of cable that comes out of the console and all of this would have gone to the aft end of the boat and it's all been cut off. Just to explain my methodology, what I'm doing is stripping a cable back carefully, check putting my multimeter across it and I've got nothing and then I'm just flicking every switch on the, on the uh, console until I get a voltage across it and as you can see when I flick that switch that's really tricky to do I get uh, a nice healthy um, 13 point something volts across there 
got a solder on this um, uh, antenna connector, PL, whatever it is, the name escapes me. So I don't solder the shroud, but I solder the, the core, the tip, the, the center in. Let's connect that up, see if we can connect it to the antenna um, at the outside and see if we can uh, get a Hollyhead Coast Guard for a radio check. Moment of truth, I've got the coax going out through the back and up through the deck gland. I've uh, connected them together temporarily for now uh, because I want to route that cable properly and make them all neat, nice and neat. But let's just see if we have now got... We have radio, and I'm just going to do a radio check. Hollyhead Coast Guard, Hollyhead Coast Guard, Hollyhead Coast Guard, sailing vessel Melody, Melody. Uh, could I have a radio check, please? Hollyhead Coast Guard, Hollyhead Coast Guard, this is sailing vessel Melody. Could I have a radio check, please? Right, I've just done it again and done a continuity check all the way along the cable and uh, it's it, it's good there's good continuity all the way along the cable so I can't understand why that's not working and if it doesn't work and I don't get um, signal this time uh, I'm gonna have to go because I, I'm getting married the day after tomorrow so uh, I haven't got any more time to mess with this but uh, this will be the last thing then today's episode do or die what have we achieved? Deck gland for the anchor windlass, check. Deck glands and gooseneck for the mast wiring, check, done. Deck glands for all of the GPS uh, pucks and antennas at the back, check, done. Deck gland for the wind charger, done. Deck gland for the VHF uh, auxiliary antenna on the back, done. Solar panel installed. Deck gland for that done uh, and wired up. MPPT controller working. Oh, and the nav lights working. So let's just see if this now does want to do anything. Take two. If it doesn't work, I'm not doing it again. Hollyhead Coast Guard, Hollyhead Coast Guard, Hollyhead Coast Guard. This is sailing vessel Melody. Could I please have a radio check? It's not working, so there must be a problem somewhere else. Bum. That's really annoying after all of that. But I haven't got any more time to mess with it, so I'll sort that problem out. It may actually be the antenna that I put on the back there is an old antenna that came off this boat when we bought it. So it might just be that the antenna's scrap and I need to put a new antenna on. Anyway, that's that. Um, thank you very much for watching, as always. Uh, and... Um, See you next week on Sailing Melody and as always leave us some comments, uh, leave us a like, leave us a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you hated it that's fine. Thanks, you again. Thanks again to our subscribers and anybody that's donated through Coffee or PayPal and a massive thanks to any of you who do go to that link for our wedding gift uh, list. No we're not asking anybody to do that, we're only putting the link up because a few people have said, oh, we'd like to give you something for your wedding, which is really nice and really lovely. So the link's there if you want it, but um, huge thanks if you do. Uh, and in the meantime, see you next week on Sailing Melody, where we'll have the, some footage from the wedding and some more boat work.